Okay, that works. So, good afternoon. So, like I expressed earlier, uh, my name is Shay Hagens. I am um, I'm a citizen of Rochester, New York. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Um, this is a demonstration for my class, um, for the class I've been taking over the last couple of weeks. But, say hello, everyone. Hi. So, I'm actually presenting in front of the group that I'm working for for the summer, and I want to give them insight as to why I become the work tired, and also <laughs> the new information I learned. So the class that I was taking was queer theory, and what I'm choosing to speak about today is queer theory and gender theory. So I want to first touch on a couple things. One, like I um, expressed to y'all earlier, there's going to be a lot of things that's going to probably sound new to you. I'll make sense of it, but I want you to understand that this is not to prove anything. It's much to make sense and ask more questions. So you're going to have, you're probably going to have some questions when I'm done, but I want you to understand what it is or how we got to where we are. So. The first thing that I want you to pay attention to is the signs that's recognizable in the middle. Normally, this is perceived as what? Male. And this is perceived as what? Female. Why? Somebody. Why, why is this considered female, Gianna? Because females wear dresses and men don't, so. Okay. Why would this be perceived as a male? Look like you were in a suit. Okay. Notice how you, you just made, no, you, what you did is what you made rational, you made rational what you know and you, what you perceive. Do I put a tie on this? No. Is it dress pants? No. Is it dress shoes? No. You got the shoulders though. Huh? <laughs> you got the shoulders? Yeah. So women don't got shoulders. Women just walk around like this. <laughs> just shoulderless. There's just no shoulders. All right, cool. You said it. I just want to make sense of what you said. Now, if that is the signs, why is this one pink and this one blue? Some males can feel like they're actually female. Some males can feel like they're actually female? That they were meant to be a female. Hmm. Close. We're going to get there. It's not that a male feels like they're made to be a female as much as what you express and what you feel are two different things. Which brings us to, boom, gender expression and gender identity. Gender expression is a reference to individual sense of being as a physical expression. That's clothes, that's the way they groom, that's the way they, the mannerisms, the way they talk. Just like when you got women, they say, yes. And you got dudes that say, yes. And we look at the dudes like, you're doing that like a female. No, it's, it's just a mannerism, but that is the gender expression. What we have, gender identity, is the way that you feel inside, the things that you interpret. If I feel like I'm a man inside, then I will express a man outside. But if I don't express a man outside by what you perceive, that doesn't mean that I lack any of the man that I am inside. Hence why we play and we have this confusion with the term masculinity and femininity. So when you think of masculinity, what's the first thing you think of, Justin? Man. man. Why? Okay. Yeah. Now, somebody else? Can you give me something for femininity? Um, Talia. When you think of femininity, what do you think about? Oh, a woman, a girl. Woman, a girl. Now watch this. There's nothing wrong with what I said. I want you, I'm, this is about learning. We're all learning together. Why is it that when men express how they feel, a woman is saying that you're being what? <laughs> whoa, whoa. No, y'all, everything was right. Y'all being weak. Y'all being feminine. Y'all, you know what I mean? Like, why is it coined or why do we give identity to the term weakness when it comes to femininity? But then we just said that when we think of femininity, we think of women. Are women weak? No. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you about to get beat up. <laughs> Better shut up. <laughs> it's like, how, so, so at what point, why, how are we putting strength? How are we putting like barbells and dumbbells and bench presses on femininity? <laughs> and at what point are we saying that going to the gym is masculine? Because women are cocky. Yes, they are. Some of them. So there's not cocky women? Because yes. I ain't gonna lie, I done seen a woman in the gym the other day. I was like, I want no smoke. I just, <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
It ain't nothing worse than when a woman put down waist to look at you like this. You like, why? why? <laughs> Ma'am, I am on the treadmill. I'm not even looking at nothing. So, so it goes. That goes back to what we're saying about gender identity and gender expression. How you feel inside, you know what I'm saying, as, as well as how you feel outside. This is where we need to um, educate ourselves, understanding that all this started with labeling. And I want. I have some terms up here that I want to touch on. Uh, one of the terms is. Um, Performanimities, which is the name and speech given to social acts. So, when we walk in like this, if a girl's to do that, you say you walk in like a? Yeah. Like a dude? Why are you walking like a dude? That's not a dude walk. It's a walk. How, how can a dude have a whole walk? First of all, like we, so we have this term dude. We came up with these labels. And what we realize is that the more that we label and the more that we make identity as something, we're saying that that's what it is. We put it in a box. And what we realize is that this is going to put us in a phrase where we're looking at singular truths. Singular truths are truths that are measurable scientifically. So if you have something that you can't measure or something that you can't understand by proving it through science, is it true? That is where our ignorance lies. Because we can't identify something, we say that it's not true. This brings on problemization. A method of defamiliarization ah, of, of, de of a common belief by making things that are not understood into problems that must have a solution. Say that one more time. Don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I had to sound it out. I use hooked on phonics and everything. <laughs> defamiliarization. So basically what it's saying is that if I can't make sense of this, this ain't true. What? You do what? Nah, that, that, ain't, that thing don't even count. And that's how we view sexuality and that's how we view identity because the moment that we can't define something, it's like, oh, that's weird. Not different because there's nothing wrong with being different. But the thing is, make sure that you understand the language that you're using. So with that, we have post-structuralization. It's a rejection, rejection or critique of humanistic logic. So what you think and what you spent your whole time knowing was basic or, or ba uh, based off the beliefs that your parents, um, your environment, some of your influences, some of your life experiences, those things create what you know, right? Now, what we know and what we believe we know are what we're questioning right now. So... Who in here can properly define the original term of heterosexual? Okay, for those that believe they're heterosexual, raise your hand. Jamal, what do you feel is a heterosexual? A straight man that's of the, the straight man that is what? That's attracted to the opposite sex. So watch this. If attraction was the action, right? Attraction is the action. And you said a straight man that's attracted to the opposite sex. Why are men and women made opposite when technically we run and we wouldn't exist without the other one? We coexist. So now you see how labeling made a versus battle, opposite. The original term for heterosexual before post-modernization, which was in the 18th century, was a term that was coined for anybody that has sex without the, uh, without the intent for procreation. In other words, if you was doing the nasty without trying to make babies, you was a heterosexual. All right? You was considered nasty. You just can send a sin and sin, sin, right? <laughs> With that being said, what happened is the church came in, oh, we want to hear every nasty thought that you have. Let us know what you've been sending for so we can pray over you. You did what now? You thought about what? Oh, my God. And they wrote it all down, and they made it seem immoral. And they, and they deemed it immoral, which goes off of our next term, which is process, an, ex an, ex uh, an expected practice or custom. A proxies. So it's uh, proxies for the uh, Greek Roman Catholic, or the Roman Catholic Church was that 
You're not going to have sex until marriage. You're only going to have sex when you want to create a baby. And if you do it out of pleasure, then that's not only considered a sin, but that makes you heterosexual and something must be wrong with you. And we need to pray over you. Father God, please let them have a baby when they go to do it. Amen. Right? What I want y'all to understand and what I'm going to go deeper into is that gender doesn't necessarily equate what you perceive. It's what you do. The way that you do it. The way that you internalize. When I met all of y'all about the last five weeks, right? And y'all told me y'all names. I can, I, I'm going to go with Ajaya because that's the one that sticks out the most. If I was to say Aja, she would look at me like, that's not my name. That's not what you call me. Right? Your name is? Ajaya. Now, watch this. We've been calling you Emily for the last five weeks. <laughs> now, that's your last name. But in any event that you felt uncomfortable, the first thing you will say is, call me by. Right? And that's a way of respecting your name, and that's a way of respecting who you are. The same thing goes with sexuality. If you want somebody to understand and respect who they are, and they're asking you to, this is what I am, you don't put them in a box. You respect it for what they're telling you. You don't go off a label. You're not making up labels for yourself to make sense of them. They told you who they are. I think the best way to look at this one, and it's a phase that I, I will have to say, I'm going to edit it in a certain way, but if, has anybody ever seen the Kanye interview when he said, I am a God? <laughs> And he said, would you, be, would you be more comfortable if I said I was an N-word? Mm -hmm. Because that's what you want to hear. I said, I'm a God. Address me as one. I didn't say I was God. He said, I am a God. If I'm created like my father, that makes me a God. There you go. What we find with labels is that labels started to really tear down people. And if we didn't have a label for you, we felt like you didn't exist. And if you didn't exist, we need to find a label for you. I can tell you right now, if an insect comes in this room, the first thing that's going to happen is the dude going to be like, ugh, they mad dirty, right? And then the chicks going to be like, oh my God, and they're going to scream. But then guess what? If we don't know what it is, what are we going to call it? A bug. That's it, right? Now, what if that bug just happened to stand up like, yo, listen, I'm not a bug, fam. <laughs> like, don't, don't address me as no bug. I'm not a bug. You gonna, everybody going to be freaking out because now the bug has an identity. The bug probably has a name, and simply because we don't know it, we look at it as like it's weird or it's unacceptable. Yeah, I don't care what that bug says. Y'all lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make sure the bug gets you first. <laughs> all right? So, one of the pioneers for this whole queer theory is the founder, Judith Butler. Judith Butler refused to accept identity for face value. Basically, what she did was everything that we thought that was right, and it was, oh, this is the guaranteed way. No. There needs to be questions that need to be asked. And there are questions because we didn't just get here with this information. There are some things that happened that led to one thing, that led to something else, that led to something else. And what we realized is that we just made some of this stuff up. We really made this up as we went along. What I want y'all to also understand is that when I made this chart, I specifically made it with the coloration being different because we identify things by color because we give them the names and speech, we give them the whole thought of this is how we view it without even going into it. But identification is only meaningful within binary framework. Think about that. Binary framework. Aretha Franklin has a song that says, you make me feel like a natural woman. A natural woman. <laughs> Everybody, you make me. All right, so watch this. With that being said, she said, you make me feel like a natural woman. Natural meaning that it's in its original state, that is unchanged, that is organic, and that is binary. Woman is the expression of who she feels like internally. So to say a natural woman is just like this ordained feeling, like this is what I was given, this is how I feel. Woman is how, I'm, how I identify myself. But what we're saying is that it's improper for a person to be born with male genitalia to feel like a woman. Because the moment that we say that, since we don't recognize that, it's not right. It's something weird. It's unfamiliar. But we don't know that, so therefore, we base our premeditated truths on them to say that they're wrong 
for what they feel and believe. It's not right. Now, the other funny thing about it is, you have men that don't. I got a, I got a friend right now. He does not use the word cute. No matter how cute your baby is. you like, yeah, that baby look good. <laughs> I don't know, he just... It, it, and it, it's funny. I say, yo, fam, you gotta find a better word. Like that baby look good. He's like, yeah, the baby. You know what I mean? The baby, man, handsome or something, man. I'm like, yo, the baby cute. Nah, I don't use cute. Why? You know what I mean? It's an expression. I first of all, I I don't know how to write that down. Like the baby look mad good. Is what he said. That don't even go in a novel. Like it's just weird. But it just goes to show how now we're dealing with so many different ways of viewing things that we, we're ultimately putting ourselves in a box. And with that comes the thought or comes the notion of how people develop um, develop homophilia. Because it's the, they believe that it's the fear of being, a, of being a homophobic or being perceived as a homophobic when in all honesty, it's easier and it makes more sense for us just to say that we truly don't know. Another thing that I want you to be mindful of is that with that comes respect. So, if you tell me who you are, and I respect who you are, even if I don't understand, enlighten myself to enlighten uh, or be enlightened, being open to being enlightened so that you can understand and allow others to be understood. Also, um, one of the things that I put up here is uh, Rocky, um, I think Welchens, I pronounce her name. She goes by she. Um, she created the gender pack. The gender pack is, um, is the, my professor gonna kill me. Don't look at me like that. I swear to God, it's in my notes. Um, <laughs> but basically, it was an organization that was fighting for gender equality and gender rights. And there was a lot of things that they realized that was contradicting because it's like, okay, we're fighting for gender rights, but are y'all fighting for transgenders? Are y'all fighting for transsexuals? Are y'all fighting for intersex? Are y'all fighting for, like, there was more, but they realized they was just trying to fight for gays or what we call gay. But if I don't identify myself as gay, then it's like, then what are you? I'm me. It's a respect level. Um, ultimately, I want to um, say this one last time to reiterate that gender is a do. It's an expression. It's in a communication. If you say who you are and you say how you feel, you express it that way, then respect it that way. If somebody says that I'm a male, even if they're dressed like a female, that has nothing to do with the way you treat them or how you misperceive them because they told you who they are and they identify themselves to you. Ultimately, if we are able to break away from labels, we can make this world a better place. That is my presentation. I'm Shay Hagens. Thank you.